tornado relief efforts. Seed hosted a Dancing with the Faculty event, and MSU offers smokers an opportunity to break the habit. All this and more today on New Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Derek Gramke. And I'm Shelby Steele. This is your news for March 29, 2012. This week, New Center had the opportunity to head out to West Liberty for a first-hand report on the relief efforts that are taking place. The scene around downtown West Liberty was a total devastation. The hope and the will to rebuild and carry on still remain as many community members and volunteers are showing up to lend a helping hand. New Center had a chance to speak with members of some of the volunteer organizations who were there to help the people get their lives back in order. What's going on right now is we are coordinating volunteers to basically match volunteer interest with homeowner needs. So the tornado came through, did a lot of damage to homes and fields and livelihoods and things of that nature. There's been an outpouring of a volunteer interest uh, to help in that in the recovery and get people to that next stage. So. In an effort to coordinate some of that, make it more efficient, uh, the Volunteer Reception Center exists to match unmet homeowner need with volunteer interest. We've had groups from all over the country stop by, say we heard about it, we were traveling through, we want to help, how? And it's as simple as signing a waiver uh, and we, we put you out in the field. So it's, it's pretty easy to get involved in the relief effort uh, in and around Morgan County anyway. The areas within the county that we have identified as uh, most critical are basically helping homeowners who don't have insurance, um, who are just overwhelmed by this entire event and experience with removing trees from either their home or their property, uh, clearing debris, um, helping them salvage some you know, uh, valuable items and uh, basically getting them to a point where they, they can make a decision about whether or not they want to sell their home, if they want to rebuild their home. We get them to that point using the volunteer manpower that is available. I know I was uh, assessing the other day and I was trying to find some homeowner for a different lot and this one lady, I had a nice conversation with her and she actually lost a couple of cousins during the storm. And I know the one thing that really touched me was like when I started asking her and you know, saying, that, okay, we'll bring volunteers out to help on your property. It's like she, like hope was brought back to her. She kind of lost it for the past couple of days. So that was really touching. And um, I, it, it makes me want to work harder. Well, I've seen some bad things out there. I've seen some good things. I've seen communities come together and help each other. Um, seeing people's lives just shattered. I was out at one house today and the lady was just terrified to go back into her house because she and her children were in the bathtub. and. She's absolutely terrified to go back in. Um, I've seen animals on the road, you know, some just left there, others dead, and you know, it's like, I know your lives are destroyed, but that, they're still part of your family, you know? It's, you're gonna leave them out there, it's like you're abandoning your family, and um, so things can be, and then, but you know, none of, none of the animals seem, <laughs> you know, angry or anything, they, they're all real good, so if you see a dog, don't worry, it probably won't attack you. It's the volunteer response to this event has been absolutely overwhelming. I've responded to a lot of different disasters across the state and around the world, and the outpouring of support for this from the community is absolutely incredible, and uh, yeah, this, this town, this county really cares for its own. It's, it's really great to see. If you are interested in volunteering, contact the Volunteer Hotline in West Liberty at 606-783-8756 or the Center for Regional Engagement on campus. MSU offers the opportunity for smokers to break the habit through smoking secession programs on campus. News Center's Greg Bowen has more. Smoking is an addictive habit and also one that is difficult to stop after long time usage. By offering the secession program known as the Cooper Clayton Method at the Recreation Center, MSU hopes to make the quitting process easier for smokers looking to drop the habit. New Center spoke with Recreation Center Marketing Assistant Cody Hart about the program and its success so far. We have a registered nurse from St. Clair Regional Medical Center come in and teach the class. We actually teach class upstairs on the second floor. Uh, you'll purchase a book for $12 and she'll go through the 13-week program with you. and you'll slowly start to see how you don't need to smoke anymore. We've had uh, a couple people do it before. It hasn't been very large, 
since we just started here a little bit ago, but we've had a couple of people go through and have actually seen great results and to have almost limited to their cigarette smoking to zero or stop completely. The center also spoke with Counselor Carol Barnett about why the method works. One of the main premises of the program is group support. So they really encourage people to be trained. It's a, I received free training in this method of, stop, of smoking cessation, and they want each individual to use some type of tobacco or nicotine replacement. So some individuals use the, the patches, some use the lozenges, and some the gum. But regardless of what method you use, you, um, the, the program lasts for 12 weeks, and each week you are provided with educational information that is kind of developed for where what you might be thinking or experiencing so it has a psychological base and so you know for the first week individuals keep track of how much they are smoking and the times of day they keep a very careful log and then by week two they're ready to lay the the tobacco down and to begin using their nicotine replacement product and begin their journey on not smoking. Reporting for News Center, I'm Greg Bowen. For more information about smoking cessation programs, visit the Recreation Center or the Health Clinic on campus. We'll be right back after the break with Haley Murphy and a quick look at weather. New and current independent artists. Eric Riddle's Electro World, featuring dubstep and electronica. Tanner Boyd's Laugh, a great comedy show, full of laughs and gags. Derek Moore's Moorhead Metal Vault, a headbanger's delight, loud and in your face. Tyler Mullen's Bluegrass Connection, a classic experience and instrumental tradition. WPRC, great radio style entertainment. Tune into the show, broadcasting on channel 77, starting at 6 p.m. Also, check us out on Facebook. I'm so freaking bored. I cannot handle another hour of the Kardashians. I wish we'd go bowling. Me too. Great. Your wish has come true. Wilson Lanes, located inside a Laughlin Health Building on campus, has six lanes of pure bowling fun, and now with automated scoring. Two dollars per game and a dollar shoe rental. How could you pass this up? For those students with places to go and no car, don't forget to ride your bike. Riding your bike can be a quick way to class, and it's also an enjoyable way to ride through town. Just remember to pay attention and be safe. For over 25 years, the Kentucky Folk Art Center has provided the community with some of the finest folk art pieces amongst the region. The first floor gallery displays a periodically alternating exhibit of the center's most impressive permanent collection, as well as a wide array of unique items for sale at its jewelry, sculptural pieces alongside t-shirts. The second floor hosts several different folk art exhibits throughout the year. Visit the Kentucky Folk Art Center Monday through Saturday from 9 to 5 located at 102 West 1st Street in Moorhead, Kentucky. Welcome back to News Center. I'm Haley Murphy. Here's a quick look at your weather. Our maps come from WKYT, so thanks to them. As you can see right now, the current temperature is around 64 degrees. It's a beautiful day. Sun's been shining all day, so no sign of rain or anything, so hopefully that continues. Take a look at our map around Kentucky. You can see it's pretty clear all around. Not much going on, a little bit of rain down near London. Um, some storms might come up from Tennessee. You might see a couple of those overnight, but shouldn't be anything too bad. Overall, pretty clear and beautiful day. Our temperatures, you can see, we're at 74 down around London, 64 up in Lexington, so cooling down a bit, 61 up in Covington, 70 around Louisville, 76 in Bowling Green, 
If you take a look over here in Ashland, closer to us, it's around 64 degrees. So overall, it's looking really good. Um, it's a pretty day outside, and the temperatures are pleasant all around. So hopefully this keeps up. We might see some storms tomorrow, but we'll talk about that later. Now we'll take it to New Center Notices with Shelby Steele. Welcome to New Center Notices. This week we have Sarah Burkhart with us. She is the Assistant Community Service Chair for Kappa Delta Sorority. And this week they're having their Shamrock Week, so she's going to tell us more about that. So Sarah, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Um, first, can you tell me what Shamrock Week is? Yes. Shamrock Week is Kappa Delta's Philanthropy Week. We raise money for Prevent Child Abuse America. So all week we'll have events and all of the proceeds will go to that philanthropy. Um, so can you tell me more about your philanthropy, like the, the money goes towards your philanthropy, right? Yes. This week we have had four events. Tonight is our final night at Skateland. We started off on Monday with a fundraiser night at Gaddy's and then we've had a T&L with the BCM and pancakes and then we've had a Zoomathon and tonight we'll be skating and we're going to have a bake sale and we've invited um, all the elementary schools from Rowan County along with the middle school and high school to come join us as well. Did you guys have a goal set in mind for how much money you wanted to raise? Yes, we would like to see at least a thousand dollars come in that we can donate to Prevent Child Abuse America and as of yesterday we were well on our way towards that goal. We were about halfway. Awesome. So. Um, what do you guys do to advertise for Shamrock Week? Well, we've had flyers, we've had posters all around campus, some in the community. We have really have utilized social media, Twitter, Facebook, to spread the word. And we're just trying to, word by mouth, let all of our friends know. What other community service events does Kappa Delta participate in? We have several. We also have shenanigans. And we have a highway cleanup that we do each semester, and we also work with local Girl Scout troops. Um, so, more about your event tonight. It's at Skateland. What will you guys be doing there? Well, tonight we'll be roller skating. Um, we'll be having free skate, of course, but we also have a few events planned. We'll be doing a cake skate, which is kind of like a cakewalk. And we'll doing roller skating limbo and roller skate races, a few other things, and then we'll have our bake sale going on at the same time. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today, Sarah. And we'll be right back with Haley Murphy and another look at weather and Cecil Program with sports. What's wrong, dude? Second guessing that cheeseburger? Maybe you should take another look at that before you eat it. Don't eat me. Now how could you be thinking of eating that when really you're thinking of a slow-cooked chili-covered geodog with cheese with your selected choice of chips? Wrong. Throw that thing away. Located on the first floor behind the elevator. What about me? Hear Me Roar is a show about the real-life experiences and personal stories of women in today's world. Hear Me Roar is also a program that promotes women artists, writers, dancers, scholars, and musicians. Become a multimedia production major. We provide skills development for using technology to create audio and visual messages for use in all digital media. The program is designed to help students become highly marketable candidates for careers that include radio and television production, digital cinema, narrative and documentary filmmaking, news production, and audio and video production. Eagle Trace Golf Course is just minutes from Moorhead, Kentucky, right off the Sharky Farmer's exit. Bring your friends and family for a fun and affordable round of golf. The course features a driving range, putting green, and a special discount for MSU students. 
Call 606-783-9073 to arrange your tea time or group outing. Welcome back to News Center. Here's another look at your weather. As you can see right now, currently in Moorhead, it's 64 degrees and sunny. Humidity is around 50, 56%, and our winds are northeast at 7 miles per hour. So it's a gorgeous day out, not, nothing to complain about. Take a look at the bluegrass. There's not much going on around the state. Pretty clear. Should stay that way. We might see a couple storms overnight, but hopefully they hold off. Um, you can see down in London there's a little bit of rain, but nothing too extreme. Our temperature is across the bluegrass. Pretty warm overall, around 76 degrees down in Bowling Green, 74 over in London, cooling down a bit to 64 in Lexington. Up in the capital, around 65, and in Covington, 61 degrees. Over in Ashland, you can see it's around 64 degrees, so still beautiful everywhere across the state. Take a look at the country. Not too much going on. Um, a little bit of storms down in near, near Texas, um, and a little bit to the northeast of us. Shouldn't be too bad. Might see some storms overnight, but I think overall it should stay pretty clear. Take a look at our cloud coverage. As you can see, not too bad around the state or around the United States. Maybe a little bit coming towards us, but it should stay pretty clear overnight. We might see a few clouds and a few storms due to that. Take a look at our temperatures across the country. You can see it's rather warm down in Texas, around 70s down there, but with that warm weather brings lightning and thunderstorms, so they'll be seeing a little bit more extreme weather. Um, over towards California, you can see around the 50s, so a little bit cooler than expected. Take a look on our side of the country. We're at about 66 across the state with a chance of storms overnight, like I said. If you look down in Florida, you can see it's rather warm, but also some storms coming in off the coast. Tonight, we'll see your sunset around 7.59 p.m. and looking mostly clear for the evening. Your low is 54, so not too cold overnight, and hopefully that leads to a beautiful day tomorrow. We're looking at a high around 77 and a chance of thunderstorms um, around a 30% chance, so should still be a pretty day. Take a look at your five-day forecast. Friday, we have a high of 77 and a low of 54 with a chance of storms, like I said. Saturday, it's partly sunny with a high of 64 and a low of 48. Sunday, it's also partly cloudy, but a beautiful day nonetheless. 78 degrees for the high and 61 degrees for the low. Monday, we're looking for straight sunshine, 79 degrees for the high and 60 degrees for the low. Tuesday, we have the potential to see some more storms but still a high around 64, so not too bad, and a low of 46. So how do y'all think about the weather? You think it's gonna stay beautiful? Yeah, uh, it looks like it's starting to stay a little bit more consistent. Yeah, That's for I'm sure. Just, I'm glad for warmer weather, I hate the cold. Well, hopefully it stays this way. The storm shouldn't hit us too bad, it's a low chance, and the weekend's beautiful. It's good, looking for a nice weekend, mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely. Now we'll take it to Cecil Program with Swartz. Tuesday night, Moorhead's Baseball Eagles scored a 7-5 win over West Virginia after a close contest. The Eagles pulled ahead in the seventh inning after designated hitter Drew Williams hit his first home run of the season. The home run allowed for a two-run drive. The Eagles will resume OVC play this weekend when they host Jacksonville State in a three-game series at Allen Field. Game time is set for 5 p.m. on Friday, Saturday at 2 p.m., and Sunday at 1 p.m. Moorhead State Softball Eagles hit the road over the weekend for a three-game series with Austin P. The Softball Eagles won one of their games in a 4-3 to three contest that went to extra innings. They fell in, the other, they fell in a 2-1 to one contest and a 7-3 to three contest to the Lady Colonels. The Softball Eagles are currently in action against Eastern Kentucky and host Jacksonville State this weekend with a doubleheader Saturday beginning at 1 p.m and a single game on Sunday at 1 p.m. Jamie Gordon, the head coach for the Moorhead State Volleyball Eagles, has signed a contract extension through 2015. Gordon came to MSU in 2003 and earned a Coach of the Year award in 2003 as well as 2010. 
More recently, Gordon led the Eagles to their first NCAA tournament appearance and their third OVC championship in four years. Gordon is enthusiastic about the extension and praised the school's administration, players, and the program itself. Now it's time for New Center's Sports Trivia. When was the last time Kentucky and Louisville met in the NCAA tournament? A. 1959, B. 1975, C. 1984, or D. 1992? Haley, what do you think? I really have no idea. I'm going to go with C. 1984. I'm going to take a guess and go with uh, D. 1992 is I have no idea either, so I'm going to say 1992 as well. Uh, Haley's actually correct. It must be something with the weather person getting it right every week. But the answer wasn't actually 1984. Uh, that was their last meeting in the postseason, obviously. Kentucky won that matchup, 65-44. Uh, both teams are actually tied two games apiece overall in the NCAA tournament when they're facing one another. So this upcoming weekend will be a tiebreaker for these two schools. Uh, this is the first time in both schools' history that they have met this far this deep in the tournament. And, you know, with so much all eyes being on the state of Kentucky and, you know, it's great exposure and all that. Uh, but do you all have any, like, viewing parties planned with where you might have watched the game or anything like that? Uh, not necessarily for that game. I just know that Lexington's probably going to be getting a little wild with uh, everything. <laughs> I'll probably, probably watch it. I'll probably watch it with my grandma because she's a big UK <laughs> fan. And I know it's, you know, she'd be really excited. Yeah, definitely. They'll be talking about this game for the next 25 years, possibly, depending on which team wins. Uh, we'll be right back after Sports Calendar. Hey man, you're not supposed to be smoking on campus. Don't listen to him, it isn't like anyone's gonna know he's smoking a cigarette. That's a really bad idea. Remember, Morehead State University is a tobacco-free campus. At the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music, we preserve and develop the art form and represent our cultural heritage through performance, educational outreach, and interaction with the community in the MSU service region and beyond. exceptional individuals, a newly recognized student organization has begun fundraising to help local students with disabilities. New Center's Haley Murphy has more on the story. 
MSU's newest student organization, SEED, held their first fundraising event Tuesday. Dancing with the Faculty was a competition open to all faculty members to create a dance routine with the help of students in hopes of winning one of several awards. Six faculty members participated and several won awards, including Dora Amati, Ann Rathbun, and April Miller. New Center spoke with two C members to learn how the organization got started. SEED, um, it stands for Students Empowering Exceptional Individuals. Um, my, well, let's see, the president, uh, Stacey Timberlake, she approached me after a TEP interview when I um, was explaining that I had a specific learning disability in math, and she was telling me more about her disability and how she really wanted to come up with a student organization. SEED matches their members with high school and middle school students who have similar disabilities. They are to be mentors to the students and remind them that college is not out of reach despite their disability. Reporting for News Center, I'm Haley Murphy. The Cats are still dancing and so are the Cards. The Kentucky Wildcats will face off against the Louisville Cardinals Saturday in a rematch of the New Year's Eve game. The winner of the game will play the championship game on Monday in New Orleans. Hardy Breeding has this week's Man on the Street story. The 2012 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament tipped off March 13th in Dayton, Ohio. New Center asked students about their teams, brackets, and Final Four predictions in New Orleans. My brackets at first really didn't turn out very good. I was really skeptical on some things. I really made a lot of wrong decisions. But as the tournament progressed on and we got into the Final Four, I started actually winning a few more of the games, started getting a few more things right. I don't know, I got three out of the four Final Fours when it came down to it. So it turned out to be a little better than what I expected, but if I'd have done a little better at the first round games, probably would have been in a little better shape. I always do these uh, competitions and stuff with my <clears throat> where my dad works at and there's about 26 people that I insert a bracket to see who has actually ends up with the best bracket and right now I'm actually in third place but it's not looking good because I'm not sure that the the games I picked with the first probably are going to mess me up in the long run. Kentucky is in the final four for the second straight year facing in-state rival Louisville. Normally, fans might be worried about the dreaded rematch, but UK fans seem confident. I'm excited about Kentucky making it as far as they did, you know. Uh, they are the best in the nation after all, and we all support Big Blue Nation in Kentucky here. Uh, I think it's a good game, Louisville and Kentucky, that's, that's a great, you know, Kentucky in the Final Four playing for the win. Uh, well, of course, I think UK is going to get past Louisville, and I think it'll be... In the end, it's going to be Ohio State and UK, and UK is going to end up coming out with it. Well, it seems like Kentucky's been stepping up their game a lot here lately, and the fact that uh, it seems like they're working a lot more together, and they're starting to get a little bit of an underneath-the-basket game going on. Um, it seems like you see a lot less uh, less of the outside uh, offense like you used to, and they're trying to work more tons towards underneath the basket. Uh, a lot of teams, what few times they have been beaten, that is where they have been beaten is underneath the basket. And here, like last game, a lot more of the uh, other players have been stepping up. Like uh, Miller's been having great games here lately. And uh, also, uh, Terrence Jones has really stepped up his game last time. Uh, Lamb's been kind of on the uh, not as prominent as he used to have been with his uh, free throw shooting. I remember he missed uh, an unheard of two in his last game in the first half and uh, missed a few more later. But I believe you know they have good days and bad days, but it'll be an interesting game uh, Saturday when they go against Louisville again. There have been many great regular season games between Kentucky and Louisville, but meeting in the Final Four it will be a first for this famed rivalry. Who will win? We'll know this Saturday evening. Reporting for News Center, this is Hardy Breeding. So as you all know, we're coming off for spring break. What'd you guys get into? Um, I went down to Panama for a few days actually, went home with my family for a little bit and then just drove on down to Panama, so had a good time. That sounds like fun. I went to Panama as well, but I stayed for five <laughs> days. What about you, Susan? I tried to hold down the fort at Morning State <laughs> Public Radio, worked uh, over spring break, tried to make a little money in my pocket. They keep you busy? Uh, a little bit, you know, everybody, like y'all got to go to Panama, I didn't get have, have as much exciting fun as what y'all did down there, but you know, we had as so much fun up here, I'm sure. They Extra keep. cash is always important, though. So. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. We had pretty weather up here, too. We just got lucky, I guess, at the right time to have all kinds of nice weather. It seemed like it really opened up the month of March for us. Absolutely. Yeah. I went deep sea fishing while I was That's fun. <laughs> well, on behalf of everybody in the New Center crew, I'm Derek Gramke. And I'm Shelby Steele. Have a great evening.
Do you ever feel like you're moving slow when it comes to finding the information you need on the internet? Well, visit Camden Carroll Library, located in between Alley Young and Fields Hall. With several floors of books, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Don't lose sleep looking for information. Visit the Camden Carroll Library, and you're sure to find just what you're looking for.